Hi, and welcome to the Libra FM podcast. We've made it to episode two. So Karen, I think we're basically experts at this point. Yeah. If you listened to last week's episode, we appreciate it. If you didn't, you should definitely go back and listen to it. It was super interesting. We got to talk with the founders of the company and learn all about how it got started. And even though I work here, I feel like I learned a ton. Full same. I learned so much. Uh, very fun time. Um, this week, what Craig and I are going to do is keep it pretty light. One of our favorite things to chat about at the company and with our friends is what people do while they're listening to audiobooks. Uh, and it's very different person to person. Um, Craig, I know <laughs> you are a big audiobook listener. Do you have any interesting things that you like to do while you're consuming this content? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely big on audiobooks. Um, and I was before I started at Libro. It was actually what led me to work at Libro was um, being obsessed with Libro. Um, I don't know if I have like a specific one thing. I mean, I do, but it's almost everything. It's almost an issue. Um, so in my in my household, it's um, my wife and my child and we all have AirPods. We all are obsessed with audiobooks. <laughs> so constantly around the house, uh, we're all taking an AirPod out, putting an AirPod back in like, huh, did you say something? <laughs> and putting it back in. And we're all meandering around the house doing whatever it is we're doing while listening to to different books. I love so that. So too many things is the, <laughs> is the answer to that question. But um, probably one of the most obvious answers. So I'll kick it off with what, what was probably the least surprising is... I love listening to audiobooks while cleaning. Um, mm, yep. I actually yep. enjoy cleaning. I find it to be very relaxing and a way to like um, almost wind down at the end of the day. But I love just like cleaning for a couple of hours, knocking out a few chapters. And it's kind of like, you know, you're folding the laundry, which is like a tedious task, but it almost just flies by because you're caught up in your book, whatever that book is. Um, and it's, I don't know, it, it helps that time go by really quickly. I completely agree. Yeah. What about you? What's your like go-to activity to get through your to be read list? So I will say this is kind of recent, but I have rekindled my love of knitting lately <laughs> and audiobooks and knitting could not go more perfectly together. That's I, the coziest because, thing I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> it is it is very cozy. And um, I, I think people who are really good at knitting can watch TV while they do it. I am not. So I have to constantly look at it and I just can't do TV right, right, and that right. at the same time. So audiobooks are perfect. I just have like a kindly narrator telling me a story and, and then I work on my blanket. It's been lovely. I should ask you, I would love to know what you're currently listening to. Oh no, I was, I was afraid you were going to ask that. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm excited now. <laughs> I'm currently reading a romance book. Um, <gasps> me called, too. Is it Book Lovers? No, um, it's not. I'm reading Book Lovers um, by Emily Henry and am loving it so far. According to my Libro app, I am 47% through, so just about halfway. Um, at the very beginning, I, I remember saying to my wife, because she was like, you have to listen to this. I was like an hour and I was like, I don't know if this is for me. And then two hours in, I was like, I love this so far. <laughs> um, the characters are very just snarky and funny and the, the dialogue back and forth is, is really funny. I find myself while folding the laundry, like laughing out loud. And um, it's been pretty I enjoyable so far. So I look forward to where it's going next. Oh, that's awesome. I have to check that one out. I I haven't added that to my app yet. So I'll put <laughs> it on the list. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what about you? What's your, what's uh helping you knit that blanket? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll put, I'll put a picture of the blanket in the show notes. So everyone there can see my, my terrible knitting. I'm also listening to a romance novel. Um, I, not that long ago, read One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, and I very much enjoyed it. Um, I, I never I read like, that one, but what's her other really big one? Is it um, Red, White, and Royal Blue? Yeah, yes. I read that one and absolutely loved it. Um, I read it like over vacation, like lying yeah. on a beach. It was like the perfect book for it. Extremely funny, super just endearing. I really loved that. That's So that's the one I'm listening to now. Um, so I'm kind of going backward through Casey's catalog and I love it. I completely agree. It is just yeah. the perfect, it's taking me to a happy place. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love, I love Casey's writing. I love the characters in this book. I love the banter. It is just so charming. And this is red, white, and royal blue or one last stop you're talking about? Red, white, and royal blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, love I, haven't, it. I haven't read the newer one. Um, maybe when I'm done with book lovers, I'll just go right to that, you know, just keep the 
keep the romance moving. Um, I think so. It's summertime. You know, I think it's, I think it's the right time. For, I, my sister and I, our plan was to both read devil in the white city together, which yeah, I yeah. am very excited about, but I picked it up and I just have a lot of chaotic things going on in my life right now. And it was too much information to process. So I put that down, started that, red, white, and Royal blue. And I'm like, this is what, this is what I needed. Yes. <laughs> I have almost an identical um, situation. I picked up um, 100% democracy. Um, yep. I forget the exact title. I'll put it in the show notes, but it's basically like the case for universal voting by um, gotcha. EJ Dion. And it's, you know, it's nonfiction about like why, like, to save democracy, we need to have universal voting. Almost like, you know, like you have to go do jury duty. It's not a choice. Um, so they were, gotcha. they were thinking of the book is making a case for that, but for voting. And I got like 30% and I was like, oh my God, I am, <laughs> I totally am on board, but man, this is heavy. I was like, I, and then I, and then I grabbed this book lover's book and I'm in a much happier place now. <laughs> There's too much other like horrible stuff going on where I, I can't think of the demise of democracy right now, you know? I um, completely agree. Yes. We just needed to go to our happy place for a while. And that is a great use case for an audiobook. <laughs> yeah. The other, to, to get back to the the main topic, I guess, around things I do when I do audiobooks, I'll, I'll turn it around and say things I can't do when I can do audiobooks. So I'm curious <laughs> if you're, if you're the same way, I would love if I could listen to audiobooks while I work. I just oh, can't do it. I've same. tried. And what ends up happening yep. is like, I'll be working on something and just for listeners who don't know me, I'm a, I'm a designer. So I'm like designing app screens and 20 minutes will go by and I'll be like, wait a second, who's this character? Like what's <laughs> happened? Like what happened to that thing? You know, like yep. it's just in one ear and right out the other. If mm -hmm. I'm doing anything that requires like more brain power than like, you know, washing the dishes. Um, I feel the same. You feel the same. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I really struggle with listening while I'm driving because I, I am absolutely the person who does the slightly geriatric thing where if I, I'm concentrating. I have to turn down the volume so I can like see better, which makes oh, no that's sense. Funny. But <laughs> like if I have like a complicated merge coming up, I have to like turn off audio so I can like focus. And it just I, I am the opposite. I love audiobooks in the car. That's probably my other biggest one. I luckily don't have to drive a lot because I'm not a big fan of driving. But when I do, especially longer trips, like I am a that's love an audiobook in the car for sure <laughs> especially since i don't like driving it's very nice to like for a little bit it's like the miles just kind of go by because you're you know caught up in the storyline of something especially a fiction a fiction book um but that's so lovely yeah well the great news is that we happen to work with quite a few other people who enjoy listening to audiobooks so uh what we thought we would do next is have some guests join us to tell us about when they listen to their audiobooks and now also when they don't listen to their audiobooks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've <laughs> we've switched the script. Tell us when you don't listen to audiobooks. <laughs> um all right, cool. Without further ado, let's have the first person. So our first guest today is Jenna Clark. Welcome to the podcast, Jenna. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. I'm Craig. Thanks for having me. Um, we would love for you to share a little bit about what you do at Libro FM. Uh, I am a software developer on the cloud team. So we work on um, anything to do with like the website and the back end of Libro. Uh, so not the mobile apps, but pretty much everything else um, our little team touches. I love it. Nice. I was I was hoping you would explain what cloud was a little bit. I you know I've worked in tech companies for ten years, and I'm still like, what is the cloud? <laughs> you know, yeah. Like... So we just decided to name ourselves that because we're like, well, we're not really just backend because we also do the front end of the website, um, and all of what you know our infrastructure is like in the cloud. So Plus we it, just call it ourselves like fancy. the cloud team. Yeah. Yeah. We I can love use it. a little cloud emoji and Slack. Yeah. That's what I always tell people. Like, what do you do? I'm like, I work with computers, you know, websites, you know, like, yeah. Inter yeah. internet, the internet. I work, I work at the internet. Yep. Exactly. Um, yeah. So this episode, we're talking about what do people do when they listen to audiobooks? Um, so we were wondering if you could tell us what do you do and, um, you know, what's your like main activity when you're listening to audiobooks? And then also what is your current, um, audiobook listen right now? 
My current audiobook is uh, Cantoris by Carolina de Robertis. Um, I might not have said her name correctly because I know uh, she is, uh, it's Spanish, so I, there's probably a better pronunciation, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's my best. Um, <laughs> the way you just said that reminds me of when I go to a restaurant and there's something on the menu that I want, but don't know how to say, and the waiter comes <laughs> and I just kind of, I want this and just point to it and in, yeah, with complete I'm shame. Saying- yeah. Oh, I wish like I had like, I spoke another language like I can't even like roll my R's so anytime it's Same. like a Spanish word I'm like I'm like I'm destined like I'm trying but like that's all I can do I'll just roll my R's repeatedly at a restaurant <laughs> at a waiter like yeah I just yeah. I don't I I wish that when I was young I had <laughs> learned a language um because I have now as an adult quit Duolingo so many times it's uh, not even funny as, as have I <laughs> I have it on, I have it on my phone and I don't open it and somehow I don't know Spanish I don't understand you know I did download it like, yeah um, should just <laughs> osmos into your brain <laughs> yeah yeah one of these days so what, what's that uh the book is from like a couple of years ago um it's really great it's about um it's set in Uruguay and it's this group of, uh, of gay women. And it's, it's like starts in the seventies when there's a, there's a dictatorship. Um, and like, obviously like you, you're not allowed to be gay or like be openly gay there. So they're all kind of like living in, um, you know, in secret and, but they still like manage to find each other and they, take a it's at the beginning they like take a trip out to this like beach town and like camp on the beach for um a few days and it's kind of like a little paradise because it's really remote so they can kind of be themselves and then it just like follows them through the years um so like the the politics are changing in the country and like they're all like you know getting together growing apart like going in and out of relationships the whole time, like they can't really be open and out as who they are. Um, but it's just like about the, the five like main women. It's just, it's really good. Like I am less, I like can't put it down. And I missed it like a couple of years ago. I remember like it came out and I was and it was getting really good reviews. Like I had a lot of friends that really liked it, but like, you know, there's just so many books to read. I didn't get to it at the time. So I'm really glad that I like. It's always the problem, right? <laughs> Yeah, there's so yeah. many. And that's why this podcast is so dangerous because I'm adding that to my list immediately. I'm going to walk <laughs> yeah. away from this with like six more books on my list. That sounds amazing. Our Libro Slack in general is dangerous like that. I have every day, I feel like I'm, I'm downloading like three more books that like someday <laughs> I'll listen to, you know? Um, yeah. I'm at the point where when I open my app, I'm overwhelmed by the number of choices, <laughs> even just within the app, because I've like downloaded so many books from yeah. our site. Yep. Um, same, same. Um, but speaking of listening, what I was going to say is what are your favorite like activities to do when you listen to audiobooks? Like I had mentioned cleaning and kind of a, a more typical thing, but is there a any activity that you you tend to gravitate towards? I, my daily activity is, uh, listening to an audiobook when I walk the dog. So I'm um, popping in my AirPods. Um, and I always, I usually have my phone with me, but I'm super excited for our new Apple upcoming Apple watch app yes. uh, because I, I'll be able to leave that phone at home when I do this. <laughs> Finally. Um, yes. So I, I just have my AirPods in walk the dog. And yeah, sometimes it's, I'm just so sucked into the book that he gets an extra long walk because I'm like, let's keep going. Like I, uh, that's, I would say that's my, my daily one. The the problem I, I, so I do the same thing. So I, I also have a dog and, um, listen to audiobooks when I walk in or, or a podcast or whatever. And my constant problem is people, when you have a dog, people talk to you. Um, what kind of dog I... is that? And I always have to like take my AirPod out and I'm like, huh? And I always feel, <laughs> I always have that moment of like, I'm sorry. Like, even though like, yeah. I shouldn't be sorry, but I feel rude. <laughs> you know, it's, it's weird. If someone, most people don't try to talk to me probably because Winston, my dog, he is friendly, very friendly. However, he is not the most well-behaved towards um, other humans and other dogs <laughs> when he's on a leash. <laughs> so I'm always like moving off the sidewalk if somebody's like coming directly at me or I'm like crossing the street to be on the other side of the street um, so that I can make sure like he's not going to 
he's just excited. He wants to jump up and <laughs> greet people, but he does it in a way that he's a large dog. It can be frightening. I don't so. know what you're talking about. Um, for people that can't <laughs> see you, Winston is directly behind Jenna right now. He, and is being we're the best watching boy. him. <laughs> he's just... He laying in the, the window best. he is yeah but he, he's kind of big you know he's like 70 pounds so when he jumps yeah. up on a on a stranger you never know some, some people <laughs> don't appreciate it so yeah well thank you for joining our podcast yes, thanks, as a Jenna. you know our inaugural guest on the episode and enjoy your enjoy your walk after this yeah thank, thanks for having me cool thanks our next guest is Maddie Mullen. Um, so welcome to the podcast, Maddie. We'd love to hear a little bit about what you do here at Libro. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm product manager here at Libro, um, which means that I help prioritize the various projects we have on our technical roadmap. What's the, what project that's coming up are you most excited for if there is one? Um, I am currently very stoked about the upcoming launch of our Apple Watch. Um, we've had Ooh, a lot of people second call out for the Apple Watch yes. on the episode. <laughs> Jenna, We're Jenna also excited. was talking about how excited she was about it. Um, yes. So yeah, me too. Um, cool. So, what book are you listening to right now? Um, I am currently listening to Dragonfly and Amber, which is the number two book in the um, Outlander series. So yes. it's a really long one. <laughs> oh, I love Outlander, Maddie. I love it so much. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. And they're 40 hours. So I just know 40 I've got, hours. I got my Lord. listening cut out for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think the, the only audiobook I ever did that was that long was um, Name of the Wind. And then it's, mm -hmm. it's yes. sequel, um, the wise man's fear i believe and then i and then the the obama book was pretty long i don't think a it was quite that land, long though, yeah but. that one's about i think 36 so yeah close, it's a, but it's a slog you know but it's it's it usually ends up being worth it I, I mean i loved the name of the wind series so maddie knowing this book is so long what do you yes. do to pass the time <laughs> while you're listening <laughs> drive cross country <laughs> oh my gosh. I do so many things. Uh, but I think the number one thing that I like to do while listening is dishes. Um, I've got two small kids. So throughout the day, I don't do very much housework, if <laughs> any, I just throw the dishes in the sink. Um, and once they go to bed, a lot of times is when I'll like get the kitchen in order, clean all the dishes. And I used to really dread that 30 to 45 minutes that it took me to reorder our lives. <laughs> yeah. But now it's, um, it has become one of my favorite parts of the day. Cause I look forward to whatever I'm listening to during that time. So it's sort of transformed what used to be a, a chore into a relaxing, relaxing time. So. I love that so much. I was talking to someone yesterday who said something similar. Um, he lives on the East coast and he said he used to just dread his commute every day it was mm -hmm. his least favorite thing of life. And now it's his special time. He's like, I can't yes. wait to listen to my book. I'm going to learn so much on the way to work. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> so true. It can transform the very boring times into a lot more fun. It feels like me time now. So yep. it's great. I was just going to say the same thing that I, I kind of think about it as me time too, right? Because you have all your time where you're playing with the kids or you're at work or you're doing whatever. But once you have like the headphones in and you're like doing a task, you're kind of like in your own little world. And it does feel sort of relaxing, almost like it's like I'm taking time for myself, even if you are doing like manual labor in your house or whatever, you know? Um, <laughs> exactly. And I find yeah. myself, it's funny, but like I'll, I'll take my time making a cup of tea and like getting a snack <laughs> together because the whole time I've got my... You're, mil you're this, milking I'm, me time for all it's I am worth. You absolutely know? Yeah. milking it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just take an extra five to ten minutes and you're yeah, folding keep each individual sock perfectly. You're <laughs> rolling your towels, you know. It's so true. It's yeah. so true. I remember when um Firekeeper's daughter came out, one of our coworkers couldn't stop listening to it. She was like, I I couldn't put it down. And she said, This is the cleanest my house has ever been because I listened to it all in one go. <laughs> I think I love it. <laughs> oh, it's so true. That is a great book. Yeah. Yes. I I loved that one too. Cool. Thanks, Maddie. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having yeah. me. No problem. Thank you. Next up, we're having our first repeat guest on the podcast. This is Momentous. Um, welcome back, Nick. Hello. Thanks for having me. So in case you all missed the first episode, um, we're going to have Nick tell you a little bit about what he does at Libro FM. Uh, well, I am one of the co-founders of Libro FM. I am technically the creative director, 
pretty much anything visual you see come out of uh, Libro, I had some hand in it, uh, whether it's designing it myself or working with Craig on designing it. And then I wear a bunch of other little hats that aren't really worth talking about too. <laughs> I like that you specified their little hats. Little I, like, hats. I like to think of like a little, a little plastic, you know, <laughs> that's basically, it's like one of those ones that has the little uh, elastic that goes under your chin. Yeah, exactly. So it yeah. could, so like it could party, sit yeah. at a jaunty angle. That's it. Yes. So we'd love to hear what you're currently listening to and what you do when you're listening to it and your other audiobooks. Sure. So I, uh, what am I currently, I just finished a book, uh, Robogenesis yesterday, which was a sequel to a book called Rogo. <laughs> I, I'm laughing just uh, thinking about it. The name of the book is Robopocalypse. Awesome. <laughs> which is one of the most terrible book titles I've ever heard. <laughs> but the book itself was fantastic, so much so that I also listened to the sequel to it. So I finished uh, the sequel, Robogenesis, uh, last night. And um, the way I listen, I listen in a lot of the traditional ways in you know driving in my car or before bed. But some of the more unique ways, um, I like to listen when I'm working on my car. Mm -hmm. I have a classic car um, that, you know, as with most old vehicles, things are always going wrong. And so <laughs> I spend a decent amount of time in the garage wrenching on it and fixing things. And so I'll listen to audiobooks when I'm, uh, when I'm working on my car quite often. Are you listening to audiobooks about car fixing or you're just, you know, you're in deep space, robo apocalypse land while you're it's, wrenching it's deep as you put space, it. Uh, yeah. It's deep space, <laughs> robo apocalypse land or something else. I very seldom listen to books specifically about <laughs> working on cars. So I do have listened to a number of books about working with your hands and trade craft and things of that nature, um, but not specific to working on a car. Now I wish that the guys that do car talk, I don't know if you ever listened to that radio yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, I wish totally that they do. would write a book because I would absolutely listen to it. Well, one of them is not with us any longer, right? I don't, you know, honestly, it's been a few years since I've listened. So um, I'm sad to hear that if that is the case. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised if they had a book though. Those guys are, uh, were, or are hilarious. I'm going to, I'm going to look this up um, while you and Karen talk so that I'm not giving false information about this <laughs> yes. poor man's death. Spreading the some people, terrible rumor. The people yeah. need to know. So if you finished Robogenesis, do you know what you're going to start next, Nick? Um, as an audiobook, I don't know what my next, uh, my next book is. I'm also reading, um, physically reading um, How to Be Perfect. So oh, uh, cool. about morality and ethics and whatnot, which I think is very interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what my next audio list is going to be. I have, as with probably a lot of people, a really, really large list of next reads, you know, a wish list that's been built up and I'll just skim through it and see which one is tickling my fancy. Um, hate to, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but my information oh, was correct. It oh, was man. correct. So yeah. rest in, rest in peace, Todd Magliosi. That's um, sad. Yeah. So you mentioned, I think you said it's kind of a boring way, but when I, you know, to fall asleep and I actually like that one. Um, I also am a serial, <laughs> listen to an audiobook while I fall asleep guy. I, uh, I'm a side sleeper. So I put like the left AirPod in, yes. lay on my yes. right one side. In. Yeah. Same The here. one AirPod trick, you know? Yep. That's exactly um, what I do. Yeah. Do you have any go-to books? Oh, go-to books. Um, I have books I go back to every few years. Um not any for any specific like put me to sleep sort of thing, but um, let my people go surfing by Yvonne Chouinard. He's the founder of Patagonia. Um, I listen to that every couple of years. It's just a really good kind of reminder of why I'm in business, you know. And mm -hmm. then um, Shop Girl by Steve Martin. Oh yeah, yeah. That was actually turned into a movie that was decent, but the novella is fantastic. And I listen to that every couple of years. It's a very quick listen. So I have a few that I go back to. I have a really My, important question for both of you. Oh, what is your go-to sleep timer setting? <laughs> oh, like a very contentious question. It is. Um, for, for people that don't work here, we get a lot of requests around sleep timers and wanting really specific controls. So spoiler, we're working on a custom feature right now, Ooh. but you Ooh. know, so keep an eye out for that in the future. But um, I'm a half an hour sleep timer person 30 minutes. because okay. yeah, 30 minutes is usually enough time for me to fall asleep. Um, any more than that, I would be worried that I would fall asleep and then there'd be like a loud part in the audiobook that would wake me back <laughs> up and any shorter is usually not enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nick, what about you? So, um, 
I'm a, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but I have never used our sleep time. <gasps> I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm I know. truly speechless. I'm gonna a, I'm gonna add one of those sound effects. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't. I um sometimes I fall asleep quickly, sometimes I don't. I usually can tell I'm nodding off though. Very seldom do I actually fall asleep and then wake up and realize, you know, a half hour's passed. Usually it's like maybe a few seconds. And I'm like, nope, it's about that time. And <laughs> then I done. shut it off. <laughs> yeah. My my wife is though. No, my wife, my wife uses it all the time. And I think she's about a 10, 15 minute thereabouts, but yeah, I never do. You know what you're missing out on though, is the fun game of where's my AirPod when you wake up. <laughs> That's always the fun game. You're like, shake the sheets out. It goes flying yep. across the room. Um, yeah. It's funny. I never even considered that. And I'm, I'm glad I don't have that experience every morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, yeah. I'm a 20 minute sleep timer and I listen almost every night. Probably once I have stayed awake to hear the fade out at the end and say, all right, wow. it's time for, I oh, fall man. asleep every time. <laughs> I listened to uh, over an hour last night to finish Rebel Genesis. I just couldn't not. And I start, I was starting to fade too. I could feel myself <laughs> fading and I'm like, no, I can't <laughs> fade. And uh, I got through it. I might've missed a little bit of the last chapter, but I don't think it was essential. I, got, <laughs> I pretty that, much that always listen to the up. same book. Oh really? Um, yeah, I don't ever listen to the book that I'm actually currently listening to because if I fall asleep, I don't, I don't want to miss stuff. So you have like a um, go to sleep book? Yeah, yeah. Is it is it uh, narrated by Samuel L. Jackson? That one? No, it's it's <laughs> narrated by Simon Vance. Oh well, he uh, narrates everything. Uh, what yeah. what book? Interview with the Vampire uh, oh, by by Anne yeah, Rice. Anne Rice. Um, there's just something about the like way it's written in his voice. Oh man, I love that book. I'm not saying the book is boring, but no, the audio book is great for relaxing. So do you um, always listen to that same one or do you just slowly work through it until you work onto the next one and that's the one you slowly work through? Uh, like, are you going to be no, on I almost the always Vampire listen to the first chapter in a few months? <laughs> no, straight up, always, I can almost recite the first chapter by heart, I think. It's this always, I just awesome. start at the beginning of the book. Wow. Huh. It's like, it's the weirdest thing ever. I that wish I is, wasn't saying this on the podcast. That is a thing. Oh, no, that's kind of cool, though. Uh, interesting. Like, it's have an interesting you seen a choice. therapist? Well, like, I could understand someone listening to say, the same, like, somewhat motivational, you know, thing, you know, get you in a good mind space <laughs> it's, before you not, you know? not off. But interview with the vampire is an interesting choice. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's funny. Well, on that embarrassing note, we'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again uh, for having me. And this was a lot of fun. Thanks, yeah, Nick. Thanks for coming. We'll yep. talk to you soon. Cool. Our last guest on today's episode is Avery, um, who I work with a great deal. Um, so Avery, if you want to tell us a little bit about what you do at Libro. Sure. Uh, yeah. My name is Avery. I use they, them pronouns. I am an Android developer. Uh, Craig said engineer earlier, which is wrong. Engineers will yell at you <laughs> if you say that. I'm, I love that I said, that. I, I work with them so much. Let me tell you what they don't do. <laughs> <laughs> Some people call it engineer. It's one of those nitpicky things that causes massive fights like GIF and JIF, you know. Sure, yep, sure. Yep. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You can't you can't just drop that bomb and move past it. What's your uh, word of choice there? I say gif, but also whatever, you know? Yeah, <laughs> totally. That's not the hill I'm going to die on. I also say gif and the people that say gif use the argument that like the person that invented it says gif, but yep. I don't care. I'm this is this is our word now and I I like gif better as well. Gif is yeah. peanut butter. Yeah, and it's Completely. salmonella peanut butter these days. <laughs> That's true. That's oh, true. Yeah. I learned of that recently, and I'm glad I had a heads up because mm -hmm. there's a bunch of it in my home. <laughs> mm, delicious. Ooh, stay safe, Karen. <laughs> for, um, <laughs> for for people that might not know what a developer does, do you want to give us a little bit of... Sure. I realize now that I've given you useless information about me. Uh, Twitter <laughs> arguments. Um, I spend like half of my day actually writing code. Um, I, I basically, most of my work these days is working on adding features to the app, but sometimes I spend a lot of my time tracking down bugs and trying to fix them or, you know, uh, chatting with customers sometimes to try and figure out like what is going wrong for them uh, or chatting with Karen a lot of the time to try and help her <laughs> figure out what's going wrong for a customer. Um, and then the other half of the time is like figuring out what, we're going to do next or like brainstorming different things with other developers. 
there's a lot more talking to software development than I thought when I started on this. <laughs> Thank goodness I like people because, you know, yeah. not everyone does. <laughs> Do you have any um, favorite features of the Android app that you've worked on recently or you have upcoming that you're super excited about? Uh, obviously, you know about <laughs> this. Uh, I have been working on what we're calling evolution, which is... Uh, adding all of the features that iOS already has, but we don't yet, which includes uh, exploring the catalog through the app and also buying books in the app. Amazing. I yes. Know. I am so excited because I just, it's so it's such a hassle to open Firefox on my phone to go buy a book. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, this is very like privileged problem to have, but like, <laughs> it's still a problem. So I'm really psyched about that. <laughs> so now that we have the exciting what you do and what you're excited about stuff out of the way, we're curious what you're currently listening to, or if it's not current, like what you've your favorite thing you've listened to recently. Yeah. Um, so I've actually been kind of on a, a eye reading kick. How do you want to say this? Reading. Eye reading? <laughs> yeah. I love it. I knew what you meant. Yeah. I was like, yeah. makes sense to me. <laughs> As opposed yeah. to ear reading. Um, <laughs> so I've been reading uh, Alias Grace by Margaret oh. Atwood, which is um, kind of messing with my head, but it's really good. Um, and I also just finished Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang, which mm -hmm. is uh, also incredible. And I didn't realize that it was... Um, one of those stories was the source of the arrival movie plot. Oh, right. And I was like reading it. I was like, this is just like arrival. What happened? <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe they ripped this off. <laughs> no, or the other way around. I was like, Ted, yeah. maybe you made a mistake. <laughs> I went and looked it up. It's like, oh, it's on the cover of the book. <laughs> it's I amazing. Had no yeah. idea. That's awesome. <laughs> right. And it's a good story too. Like, ooh, really messes with your head. I can right, I'm going to I'm going to pick that up. Yeah, yep. very good. I pick it up. Um, all of the stories in that book were incredible though. I um if you read that Karen, there's a particular story, I think it's the second one of this very self-absorbed guy who like gets like um basically injected with like brain juice that makes him really really smart. Okay. And I was like identifying with some of the stuff that this guy said. And I was like, uh-oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Go back to therapy. Like, this is not good. <laughs> Jeez, I'm going to have so... to add both of those to the, yeah. to the list there. By yeah, the end I'm of gonna... this episode, I'm going to have my to be read list is so much larger now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a, I'm haunted by that list all the time. I like go mm -hmm. through regular purges and there's still hundreds of books. It'll just yeah. Yeah. happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, so speaking of your gigantic to be read list or to be mm -hmm. listened to list, what are some activities um, that you do to, to get through that list? Uh, I, I listen, honestly, doing almost anything, but my favorite thing to do is start up a book and then bike to the gym and then do mm -hmm. a lifting session and bike nice. back home. Uh, cause I can get about an hour of the book out of the way and it feels like a very manageable chunk of time. And also I don't have to think about how much I'm sweating <laughs> or how much it hurts the thing that I'm doing or how hard I'm breathing. Um, yeah. That helps like take my mind off the pain a lot. I, um, I love to think about that. Cause in my mind, like I'm, I'm not like a huge gym person. I, I I'm more of like a run outside person, mm -hmm. but I love thinking of like people at the gym with like big muscles lifting like crazy and like the big headphones on. You just assume they're listening to some like metal or metal. hip hop or something really like <laughs> aggressive and then you're you have like an audiobook on i just i love that visual you know um i have got uh, from people before oh excuse me first leap um, <laughs> for, we made it this uh, far you know yeah they're like do you not like the music that i'm playing on the speakers and i'm just like oh i like it just fine but right now <laughs> I'm listening to a book about stewardship for work. <laughs> I love this so That's much. That's amazing. I also, uh, this like very speaks to your talent as a weightlifter because you and I have talked about this. I recently attempted to learn to weightlift hmm. and it was one of the most challenging mental exercises of my life. It's, I always thought that the challenge was big, heavy thing, get it over your head, but the moves are so complex yeah. and it was all I could do to just even concentrate on getting the move done. So I'm deeply impressed that you're doing that and consuming content at the same time. My yeah. mind is blown. <laughs> it's uh, It's been a long time coming, let's say. I um, started lifting when I was maybe 12 years old. So this is, 
This is an old hat for me. Although deadlifts yeah. are still really hard to get exactly right. So yeah. What speed are you typically listening to books? So I feel like we've spoken <laughs> about this before and I think you listen to books pretty fast. So now I'm picturing you're doing complex moves, lots of physical <laughs> and mental, also consuming content and at a rapid speed. <laughs> It depends on the book. So I just finished a book at one X speed, very normal uh, wow. at the gym, like honestly an hour ago, which is funny. Mm -hmm. um, but that was because the narrator was like an interesting speaker enough that I sure. wanted to hear how they were speaking and how they were narrating. And the plot was moving quickly enough that I could like stay mm. engaged. Yep. I think that's my main issue with books is when a narrator is going really slow and the plot isn't going anywhere fast. Sure, sure. And I'm like, yep. I got to get through this. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's one reason that I, I often switch to reading, uh, eye reading, if you will, <laughs> um, because I can read really fast, like text. So when I'm like, I can't get through a book in audio, I switch to eye reading and then I, I can get through it. Totally. But, yeah. um, and I can stay interested more easily, but with ear reading, I think that I am more engaged and I actually pick up more of what's said just because I have to go a little slower. And I don't do that, that cheater thing I learned in college where you skip paragraphs, you know, aren't going to be useful. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I so also, cool. I've never heard the term ear reading and I'm obsessed with it now. So well, I made it up two seconds. Fantastic. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, well, on the, on that note, maybe we'll, we'll let you go, but, um, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for thank taking you, the Avery. time and chatting with us. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me on. This has been very much less scary than I thought it was. Be, so. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Well, go enjoy some, some ear and or eye reading tonight. Um, oh, I'm going to have a beer because I fixed the position bug. Yes. Hell yeah. Have several. Hell yeah. You should have champagne <laughs> is what you should have, you know. Ooh, now that's an idea. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Cool. Right. Talk to you soon, Avery. Thanks. Bye -bye. Well, I think that about does it for this week. We hope you enjoyed getting to know our team a little bit better. We would love to hear when you listen to your audiobook. So leave us a comment on Instagram and let us know. And make sure you subscribe to the podcast in whatever app you're using because we have a bunch of kind of pokers in the fire and we have a lot of awesome authors that we're, that we're in the midst of scheduling right now. So you won't want to miss those. And just a reminder, if you haven't tried a Libro FM membership with us just yet, you can use our special promo code. It's Libro Podcast, and you'll get a bonus audiobook credit for your first month. Let us know if you have any questions or ideas for more episodes. We would love to hear from you. Shoot us an email at hello at Libro.fm. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. <laughs>